Well, the big question today, and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, what Dan Gaynor has to say about this a little later on in the program, that is, will he be watching the Super Bowl this weekend uh, in light of the fact that apparently some of the restaurants and and, uh, New Orleans and surrounding areas may not be? I've asked Taylor if he's going to be watching it, and he acknowledged he would. So, um, well, does the controversial call in the playoffs have you upset? We'll take that as a question for the day here on Viewpoints on the talk station, FM 107, AM 1240. As you heard just a moment ago, Dan Gaynor of Newsbusters.org will be joining us as well. And we'll get into the topic of football. Always a good topic uh, this time of year. As always, the numbers, if you'd like to join us, of course, 252 area code, our listening audience, 247-7282. And that toll-free number, 800-818-2255, via email at Viewpoints with an S, Viewpoints Radio at Hotmail.com, and via Facebook at Viewpoints on the Talk Station. Lots to talk about today, uh, particularly about the events of the past week. I'm sure we'll get into uh, conversations about New York and Virginia, and if you're not aware of the commonality of that, well... We'll share that with you here in just a moment. But first, I do want to, of course, thank our sponsors for the afternoon, Advanced Water Systems, the people that bring you Connecticut, folks that are, well, practically reinventing water, and, of course, Advanced Office Solutions. And as I always like to remind you, in light of the fact that we're seeing some great job numbers, um, you know, this is fascinating, improving uh, economies. You want to improve your bottom line, do not hesitate to call the folks at Advanced Office Solutions. A local number, 393-1112. That's 393-1112. And, of course, Advanced Office Solutions, a family-owned business committed to making the business the one that you're building, not the one government gave you. Still looking for that one, aren't you? Anyhow, the one that you're building, make it successful, more efficient, and in the long run, uh, more pleasing to work. I mean, uh, if you want to improve your circumstances, do not hesitate when it comes to employment to give the folks at Advanced Office Solutions a call. Be, be it a large business or a, a home business, they can assist you in a variety of ways, networking solutions, and of course they are the linear deal for our area, all linear products and services, but so much more. They can even arrange for lease purchases or lease operate opportunities for office equipment. That number again, 393-1112. Or you can go online to advosi.com. That's advosi.com. Integrity, reliability, and affordability. Advanced Office Solutions, a local supplier of linear products. They do business with you the way you want to do business with them. That number again, 393-1112. As we go to the phones, we've got Dan Gaynor with us of newsbusters.org and Dan, I'll go ahead and start off with the controversial issue. And no, it's not the uh, the hit uh, that was applied at the uh, playoffs against the uh, Saints, but rather that hit in New York and Virginia. And wow, the governor of Virginia has doubled down on it. Good afternoon. Now, to you. Are you current on the news right now uh, about, about the fact- governor of Virginia? <laughs> Yeah, the fact that his uh, back his uh, his background is now coming back to haunt him. Oh yeah, well basically they found here's a guy who ran basically saying his opponent was racist, right. and it turns out he either he is in blackface or someone else is in blackface, and and there there's two characters. You're not sure which one is him. One's in blackface, one's in a clan outfit in his in his uh, yep. yearbook. I listen. <laughs> Well, you know, this goes back to uh, the whole concept that our hit, our past uh, dictates what our future will be, and that's all there is to it. I well, I mean, you know, by all reports, he's done a lot of good stuff, but right. I'm sorry that doesn't matter anymore. Not, really? not in the world we live in right now. We, we live in a world where if people can find something this bad on you, your career is toast. Wait. And it certainly has been. I think it was Secretary of State in Florida just resigned because of something similar. They they nuked Megyn Kelly for defending. You know, this is a Halloween costume, mm-hmm. and she lost her job. So yeah, I would say um, the clock is ticking. And now here's the best part: Democrats are defending him, and how many of them are going to be dinged by this as well? And in the context of the, all the abortion stuff. Uh, Northam has become uh, too much of a distraction in an election year. Well, it, that, it's not only that he's a distraction. And, and by the way, for those who are not aware of this, uh, the Virginia governor's yearbook uh, shows either he well, uh, we're not sure who is who's in what uh, part of them. One is in blackface and the other is wearing a Klan outfit. 
And uh, the, the Virginia pilot has this story. Uh, this is going viral. Uh, you know, you, you say the Democrats are now defending him? Yeah, the, the um, I think the head of the, the Democrat uh, ah. Senate uh, came out and defended him based on his career, et cetera. But, ah. Ah. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm going to say this, and I think this is a pretty reasonable point. Uh, if you def- if if the downside of your week or, or the upside of your week, if the, the good thing you did in your week is defend infanticide, <laughs> I, I, you know. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, you're, you're the, probably looking at the you know the tail end of your political career. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I'll tell you that, and, and of course, we'll chat about the fact that they've selected Stacey Abrams to be the uh, rebuttalist. Does that word exist? I've made it up, anyhow. The rebuttalist. But, but, to, so, but so, I mean, here, because you guys don't live in Virginia, so right. you're thinking, why do we care? I'll tell you why, why you care, because Virginia is at play in every presidential election. Now, uh-huh. gradually, it's becoming a blue state because we have a lot of government employees and they vote for Democrats. Right. Uh, but when the governor is found out to be a you know, Klan or blackface, you know, wearing guy, and I, we assume he'll be out of office, but you bet that's going to be... Uh, you know, broadcast everywhere, and then you throw in no. the, the the Democrats trying to promote baby killing after birth, and well, I, this is not starting off to be a good 2020 election because if the Democrats do bad in Virginia in 2019, it makes the state more in play in 2020. I, you know, but the the interesting aspect of this, and we've heard this in the past. Uh, if if you're a conservative, you're automatically wrong. Uh, you have no redeeming qualities. If you're a liberal, we can forgive this. I, I, I'll tell you what, this is my bet. And let me put this out as a challenge to the listeners. I'd be interested in knowing, do you think that Governor Northam will get any uh, blowback, any, any reaction from either of those two events? And by the way, he has doubled down on his issue of, yes, after birth, uh, it is up to the doctor and the uh, parents as to whether or not the child should live. He has doubled down on that. It, at first, it was there was some question, uh, Dan, that he may have been sort of uh, punting, if you will. But we've got that one. And now this exposure of a yearbook picture of himself and a blackface at, or, they, or in a Klan outfit. We're not sure which one of the two is this. My question to the audience, do you think the Democrats will take any hit on this. And my question also, Dan, do you think this will be uh, designed in such a fashion that the, the governor may have to step down? Oh, yeah, I think he's going to, I think he's really? really done. Really? I mean, I, 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 think, I think the longer, this is one of those things where if you're the Democrats, you want the story to go away. And following the abortion thing, to have this follow, and remember, what is today? Oh, well, uh, you're talking about, uh, all right, help me out. We're talking, uh, we're talking about the first, the first day, day of Black, Black History, History Month. Month. Okay, I'm sorry. So, uh, so, yeah. so your, your governor in the state that used to be the capital of Confederacy, your Democrat governor in the state that used to be the capital of Confederacy, uh, is shown in either blackface or Klan outfit in an old photo. Uh, you know, that's not a good look for the Democratic Party in 2020. I... <laughs> I think God. we're going to take oh, it. We'll take a quick break on that. We've got the lines open. Got a caller already joining us. If you have a comment about this, do you think that the Democrats will will call for his his head? Uh, will they will they will they want him to step down? Uh, we want to know your opinions of this. Two five two area code two four seven seventy two eighty two. That toll free number eight hundred eight one eight two two five five. Dan Gaynor with us this afternoon here on Viewpoints on the Talk Station. Viewpoints on the talk station, FM 107 AM 1240. We've got two callers standing by. The question is, uh, will the Democrats take a hit on uh, the governor's, that's Governor Northam's, recent, uh, well, support of inf- infanticide? Uh, I think you're correct on that, Dan. And, and of course, there, there's further expansion of that whole issue. What happens about uh, the elderly? And the other question is, what about the hit related to this yearbook picture? Let's start with Ernie and Emerald Isle. Ernie, good evening. Thanks for joining us. 
Uh, first of all, the answer to your first question here is, uh, yeah, they're going to take a hit. They're going to take a big hit. You think so? Oh, I do. I do. Um, personally, uh, I think uh, termination of a, of a viable fetus is, is, a, is, is murder. It's a travesty. It, it mm -hmm. spits in the face of God. But uh, the, the, the question I wanted to really pose was, after the child is birthed, mm -hmm. Where do you draw the line as, as to the, how defective is the child? Where do you, where? Well, I mean, you don't draw the line anywhere. You draw the line at the Constitution. Any doctor who murders a child who's been born should go to prison for murder. The mother, if she is complicit, should go to prison for murder. Generally speaking, I'm, I really am like, you know, I understand women, I think, suffer very much because of abortion, and they've been taught that abortion is not anything significant. But if you've got a living baby uh, on a table and you're telling the doctor to kill it, yeah, you're, you're complicit in murder. That's just flat out. There's just no, that is a citizen of the United States of America. And any abortion doctor should go to prison for the rest of their freaking lives. Well, I, I And they're lucky that I am not in charge. Ernie, because I was in charge... I, they would not be going to prison for the rest of their freaking lives, or if they did, it would be a short trip. I, Ernie, I, the real issue I, here is what... I, I, what I, I couldn't have expressed it any better than Dan, but who are these people to play God? Uh, what if the child uh, doesn't have the right color hair that they wanted? Right. Uh, right. God forbid it had a cleft palate. Right. Uh, I, maybe it's missing a toe or a finger. Yeah, yeah, no, well, I mean, I'm, I'll just go with a pretty easy example. I am, I am really nearsighted. And, uh, you know, and both my brothers are very nearsighted. We were told that, you know, this would probably be a, uh, you, know, a, you know, a condition that didn't carry through genetically and the doctor was wrong. And the reality is, yes, all three of us got it. Well, suppose I'm number three and my parents didn't want to mess with it anymore. Right. Yeah, Do, you know, oh, he's born. Oh, wait, we think he's got bad eyes. Oh, let's just kill him. Right. <laughs> no, Ernie, it's, you've, you've mentioned it last night, and I, I, you know, the sad part about this, Ernie, and I'm going to ask Dan here in a few moments, where is, if you will, the outrage? But, Ernie, thank you very uh, much. You, Go ahead. You're talking to a person that's I know, outraged. I know, but I'm not seeing it in a general level, and I, that really bothers me. Uh, it bothers me. It bothers me to know. And, and let me tell you one thing. I, I adopted a dog. Uh -huh. It was born with a cleft palate. The breeder is extremely ethical and right. and, and and human, and she will not put a dog down as some of these kind of people do because of a of a defect that that yeah. the dog can live with. And I'm going to tell you what, I yeah. am so glad that that we adopted this dog, and it is the best dog I've ever had. And and it's and we love the dog. It's a it's a, it's a member yeah. of our family and. And we overlooked the defect. Right. Yep. Well, God, God, I want to say it's God bless you for doing it. Right. Because I will say um, I, my job kind of keeps me too busy to have a dog. And, and I love dogs. I, I, my heart, when I, when I meet people, and I'm usually kind of suspicious of whether I like them or not, when I meet a dog, I always feel like I'm meeting somebody who's on the same team. I'm meeting an ally, a friend. <laughs> and I instantly like almost every dog I've ever met. So God bless you for that. Ernie, right? thank you very much for the call. Appreciate sure. that. All right, let's go to Gary in Oriental. G Gary, good evening. Your thoughts? My thoughts are there. I'm not going to touch this uh, governor? doctor slash governor, which I find I, I find this very, very upsetting that he's a doctor, a pediatric neuro neurologist. Neurologist, right. Yeah. What happened to the hypocritical? And here's something else, you guys, that really just teased me off. This word, imp infant side, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a cover-up murder. Right. It's plain and simple. The kid didn't come out and go, you know, I don't like the world. It sucks already. I think I'm going to commit infanticide. That's exactly how they're trying to portray this word. Call it murder because it is what it is. You know, wait a second. Hold on, Gary. Uh, Dan, let's, let's touch on this here for a moment. What, I, what surprises me is the lack of outrage. Uh, I'm not seeing it from a variety of organizations. It, it's, it, if, if it is happening, obviously the media is not covering it. And I, I agree with you on that one, Gary. Thank you for correcting me on that. Well, it is murder. But and see, this is not new. Okay. And I mean, I, I, you know, everybody's all up in arms about this. Five years ago, in Florida, a Planned Parenthood monstrous 
Because right. uh, you know, woman, woman lobbyist for Planned Parenthood testified, and she said at the time that if a baby is born as a result of a failed abortion, that it would be up to the parent and doctor to decide the fate of that person. The, the, you know, the legislators are incredulous, and the media buried that story. We've got Dr. Peter Singer, who is allegedly a bioethicist. I mean, really, if there is a Mengele in America right, right now, it's this guy. Right, at, at, and at Princeton he University. he yeah. for murdering babies, not just out of the womb, but I'm not sure what age cutoff he's got. But, I mean, you know, because like, he said, well, they're not really cognizant. So we can kill them if we want. Right. The, the, term is, the term is insensate, and the, the point being that they don't have full control of all their senses, and I'm not sure if it's one or two years of age. That, you see, I don't think he does either, but I'm not advocating for him to be harmed. Uh, no. but Well, you, you know, you can, you can call it what you want to, and if you look at the word and read it like it says, you know, infants or whatever you want to call it, it's still murder. And I'm going to tell you something. You know something, Lockwood, I told you guys last night, uh -huh. and I stand behind this, the left has absolutely committed suicide in their party over this one. You know, I, you take Cortez, you take, you take uh, the Muslim, the two, the two Muslims, up one from Michigan, one from Minnesota, just horribly anti-Semitic. You take the, the, the New York uh, with the abortion, four states now, Rhode Island, New York, California, and New Mexico, which all allow this, which is, which is just obscene. Um, it's, it's really what it's done, too. It's also put a very, very bad light on the medical, on the medical profession, you know, but, badly, because of people like this. All right, but and, you, and they're going to they're going to eat their own on this one. I think I think we've oh. I think we've desensitized Dan. I think we to to Gary's point. I think we've desensitized America. I'm stunned that I seem to be that Gary and Ernie and I seem to be the only ones talking about this today, and I'm I'm really disturbed by that, Dan. Well, that, let's let's briefly recap, folks. What since they took office. What the Democratic Party now stands for, I'm sure I'm going to miss some. Uh, let's see, Kamala Harris stands for taking your guns. Uh -huh. Kamala Harris you know, and others stand for open borders. She wants to take all your health insurance. Oh, you know, you don't need that private health insurance. We're just going to take that. We're just going to take it away. So no, no guns, no private health insurance, no borders. Oh, wait, there's more stuff. Let's see. 70 or maybe even now 90 percent taxes uh you know that that's another one uh you know and it just goes on murdering children murdering children i mean mm -hmm. they're just positively satanic why don't they just put them on an altar chop them up with with sacrificial knives and eat them i mean that's where we're talking that's what we're talking about right now that is what? there's no difference I between the two none Except in well, one yeah, it, of them, it, oh. you're a little bit more honest that you are just a satanic piece of garbage. I, well, it, it, go ahead. You know, kills me too. On top of this, you guys, it, they bring the Muslims over here. Hey, come on in. Everything's cool. Yep. Now we're killing, we're killing living babies, and honor killings because it's their religion. That's pretty much okay too. I, you know, but here, here, here I'm gonna really freak out. Wait, I'm gonna freak out because you know, talk about the land of unintended consequences. Uh -huh. the, the, the extreme left has taken over most of Europe, destroying Western civilization as we know it. I mean, really, the barbarous monsters and lunatics running academia. So they forced through, through corrupt means, sleazy means, they forced through Ireland to get a, a bill to right. push through abortion. abortion. That's right. And now you know what they're running into? A lot of the doctors won't agree to do, to do it. And you know Why? Because the doctors are also Muslims, and the doctors won't kill the babies because that goes against their faith. So now the lefties in their land of multicultural extremism think, oh, we've got this perfect society. We're going to have this lefty universe. And, oh, by the way, welcome in these religious people who, oh, wait, they won't do what we tell them to do. So I, I did think that's the, that is the funny twist, twist. On, on things. Uh, in, Western civilization is committing suicide, and, 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 and Democrats and, are sharpening the knife and stabbing it in Western civilization's gut. And we see this this week. We don't have a population that's self-replicating because we murder, murder. 
I, I, Hundreds of thousands of babies a year. We have killed 60 million American children yep. since Roe v. Wade. So just for a second, to, so everyone understands what that number means. That means every single American from the tip of Maine through Connecticut and Vermont and New Hampshire into New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania, all the way down to the Maryland line, if you killed all of those people, every single man, woman, and child, African-American, Hispanic, Asian-American, Caucasian, and every other group, that's what we've done. And they wonder why we need immigration. Oh, it's because they butchered generations of the American people. And this is the same people who tell us, oh, killing babies after birth is okay. Killing babies up to the second when you would give birth is okay. This is what the left has done to America. Gary, I've got they to... They are pure evil, and I will say one more thing real okay. quickly. You know what? In the United States of America, you like Planned Parenthood, you don't like it, you don't like your county health department, birth control is free. Right. Take some responsibility. <laughs> Thanks very much, Gary. Good observation. Let's go to Jim in Pollocksville before we go to the break. Jim, welcome to the afternoon to the program. Dan Gaynor, our guest. Yes, sir. Hi. You know, one thing that I haven't heard um, in this whole debate is the comparison between these heinous laws coming out and the extent and the money and treasure we put in to going everywhere in the universe searching for life for the smallest form. <laughs> they, they will spend billions going to Mars to look for a single cell to prove evolution and have it a champion of life and evolution and will kill babies at the brink of birth here. And what? I'll take my answer off. off All right. Jim, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Wow. What a, what a well, comparison. Yeah, I mean, Jim, I mean... Jim's, obviously, we both agree Jim's right. Because, <laughs> well, you know, the, the press oh, treats God. anybody who is not an abortion extremist as some radical right-wing nut job. Oh, you believe that, you know, a baby that could, you know, is almost nine months old, you know, has some right to life. And then if we found, we found a single-cell organism mm. on a, Mars, we would see headlines like, no, but wait, life found on Mars. No, wait, so. wait a second, wait a second. We, we've been struggling to maintain uh, various uh, woodpeckers and uh, snails and uh, oh, yeah, snail, snail darter. You know, yeah. Like, you go, yeah. Let's worry about the snail darter. Yes. Go, hey, let's kill American babies. I like that. <laughs> that's right. and, and so now you're going to see there's a story came out today, at, uh, some God. sort of study. It said uh, that, uh, you know, Westerners coming to America killed so many people in the native population that altered the climate. Well, first of all, whether, whether that, those numbers are true or not, the vast majority of that is, oh, wait, disease. When, you know, when you mix populations that have never been mixed before, right, right. Uh, you, know, you get diseases, and diseases went back to Europe as well. Uh, so so the, uh, the concept is also flawed, but I thought, we were, I thought we were always told that the natives lived in harmony with the earth. Right. So apparently that's not true either. So, every, I mean, they just change the facts, so, so uh, manipulate the facts so it says whatever the hell they want. You know, the, again, and we're going to go to a break, but the thing, it still distri discourages me and just, and just worries me. I look, I'm looking at, I'm at newsbusters.org, where, of course, Dan Gaynor is the uh, editor. Newsbusters.org. The headline reads, Joe Scarborough sides with Nancy Pelosi. Wall immoral. Well, what about killing babies? We'll get back to that in just a moment here on Viewpoints. Our guest, of course, Dan Gaynor of View, uh, pardon me, of uh, Newsbusters.org. You're welcome to join us if you'd like to here on Viewpoints. The number, 252 area code 247-7282. That toll-free number, 800-818-2255. Loved the paradox, Dan, from Jim in Pollocksville. Stay with us for more. All right, uh, we're going to go to the good, bad, and the ugly. I, I don't know if it can get any uglier, uh, but 
well, who knows? We'll find out what the good, bad, and the ugly is for the week with uh, Dan Gaynor of Newsbusters.org. And Dan, help me out. Let, let's find me some good, would you? Here we go. I, I say here we go. Let's see if we can... And Dan? Yes. All right. So I was given uh, we, we little, the gun little chance to get the good there. <laughs> um, so the good is, shockingly, the Northam story. And why is that? Because it was ferreted out by conservative media. Right. And the major media had to follow it. And suddenly the national scandal was done by conservative media. And good job. And I don't want to attribute it to somebody because I think I will get it wrong because I heard it on the radio coming over here, so, uh, but, but yes, that was conservative media, and they all had to follow it, so suck it up, uh, snowflakes, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the party. All right, that's the good, let's go to the bad. Well, it's not often that someone manages to be both in the good and the bad in a negative way, oh, <laughs> but, oh. but uh, Virginia Governor Northam, uh, managed to be show up again because not only did a member of the House of Delegates in Virginia here defend uh, and do so poorly, killing babies after they're born, but then Northam went on the radio and did the same thing. And here we here we are. The major news of the week is how do we spin? The fact that Northam and his delegate are advocating for baby murder. I know. I know. I, I watched the interview on WTOP, and I was, I, you know, I, I, I was kind of stunned at at the very casual, uh, shall we say, businesslike approach that he gave to this. And when asked about that, and said, "Are you saying that after birth, you?" And he said, "Yes, we would resuscitate the baby, and then it would be a decision between the parents and the doctor." And I'm, I, I, I watched that. He didn't blink. I, that's amazing. All right, that's the bad. Now for the ugly. Oh, wait, wait, no, wait. I want because they, they, they keep using this term. Uh-huh. And, you know, and it is conservatives pounce. Right. right. Uh, so so here here is, uh, you know, I mean, basically the new new media story is that any time conservatives complain about something bad, it's not that Democrats did something bad. It's that conservatives are complaining about it. Uh, yeah, it, it, they pounce. Okay, let's go to the ugly. Well, into every week, a uh, little rain must fall. Right. And, you know, this week, we, you know, there, there were so many choices of what was going on this week. <laughs> but when we finally came down to it, my choice is something I wrote about in my column, which is media omerta. Those are the people who didn't, you know, I, I came up with this last week after, after my parents here. Um, and this is how the press, instead of covering things, covers up things. Uh -huh. For people who remember the mob movies, mm -hmm. now omerta is the promise not to rat out your friends. Uh, right. In Baltimore, we have a more contemporary way of saying it. Snitches get stitches, mm -hmm. uh, but it still is this deep, dark criminal pre promise that you're not going to say anything bad about anybody else, and so that's what happened. So you've got journalists who are unwilling to admit that they did Covington bad. I, I'll, I'll defend the Atlantic. The Atlantic did a nice story on that, but generally speaking, journalists don't want to say they did the Covington bad. They don't want to say that they didn't that they did Northam bad or the delegate bad or the New York abortion story bad. They they do these all of these from the left to the point where they become so ridiculous, and then they look around like, well, why don't journalists? Why don't conservatives like us? You guys just hate journalism. No. We hate the fact that they're all ethical, incompetent hacks. And, and I'm, I've, I've lost respect so much for the field of journalism that when I hear news, and in the last week we've heard numerous examples of journalists being laid off, but particularly we've heard BuzzFeed, HuffPost, and Vice. And Vice Three no. whack job, left-wing, anti-conservative outlets that exist purely to harm people on the right, and then I'm supposed to feel bad that these idiots lose their jobs? No. 
I am thrilled just as they would be thrilled if I lost mine. Well, the other side of this, Dan, and uh, let's let's talk about this for a moment, and the fact that no longer are these really journalists. This is part of that social media um, milieu. The, 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 they, they are, they're activists. They're, they're activists, they're yes. Not, they're, they are they're not the journalists. far left, the yeah. far left that is dragging our nation and certainly the Democratic Party to the left in such an extreme fashion that you've got People saying, "Oh yeah, we, no one should have guns. Right. We're just gonna, we're just gonna take your your insurance. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter if you got private insurance. We're just gonna take that away. Well, you know, good luck, lady. Well, yeah, <clears throat> and and I mean, this is why they do digging, and you know, they do the proctology exam for any Republican running anywhere, right. <laughs> and then you find out that oh yeah, basically Obama lied in his two autobiographies, right. just flat out made up stuff, and media never checked it because. That would have been dishonest. Oh, we can't check. You know, we can't check the, His Majesty the King, Obama. We, we're not allowed to check that because, you know, he's liberal. And oh my gosh, he's so wonderful. He's so dreamy. And then, of course, oh, Northam. Oh, well, we didn't do any checks on him. Wait, that's, that's... So then they had the audacity to complain about the Republican Oppo firm, which is yes. By the way, if you're if if you were involved somehow. In the Republican Oppo, the Virginia race, and you're listening right now, you're an idiot. Right? You know, just, How could you not just find this? Your career and go work at a Seven Eleven. How could you not find this? I, I'm I'm sitting there thinking, but I know that the parties are supposed to do their opposition research as well because they want to anticipate what the oppos are going to do. Opposition uh, organizations are going to say and find. I can't believe this is a yearbook, Dan. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Dan. Before I go to, we got to go to break. But I, I just had this epiphanal note. Judge, or now Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh, didn't we go to his yearbook? Oh, we went to. I mean, we went I mean, basically I mean, to uh, Justice Kavanaugh's <laughs> high school. I, this yeah, isn't high school. I, this is him graduating yes. medical school. Yes. How? I, I mean, but I, I still, th- I, I disagree with you, Dan. As we ra- as we go to the break, we will not see any reaction from the Democrats on this, and I bet you the governor keeps his job. And folks, if Okay, you, well, we're going to have well, we, um, dinner on that one. For, we're one gonna, way well, because we, we, we'd never see each other. Let's no, Ross no, we will. Again, and nope. and he, that would be a problem. We'll figure um. it out. No, we will figure it out. <laughs> dinner on this one. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to know your opinion on my my observation, my prediction. I'm going to get Dan's prediction on the Super Bowl, so I'm going to put him out to, on the limb as well. But the number again, 252 area code 247 247 7282, that toll free number 800 818 2255. As we go to the break, very quickly, I want to remind you about one of our sponsors, that being Advanced Water Systems, and remind you another number to remember, and that is the number to get uh, information on the Connecticut water softener from Advanced Water Systems, the single largest independent Connecticut dealer in the country. And uh, they have offices conveniently located nearby Old Cherry Point Road in New Bern, 635-6222, 635-6222. Home office and showroom, Highway 70 East between Newport and Moorhead City, 223-4444. That's 223-4444. And, of course, online at KineticoNC.com, K-I-N-E-T-I-C-O-N-C.com. Dan Gaynor with us this evening. Do you agree with me? I bet you that Governor Northam concludes his career as Governor of um, Virginia. Stay with us here on Viewpoints. All right. The bet is that uh, I think the governor will keep his job. Uh, Dan, before I get to other predictions, I do want to, of course, talk about the Super Bowl and uh, the reaction to the uh, now infamous bad call. Let's go to Ernie and Emerald Isle rejoining us. Ernie, yes, sir. Yeah, just real quick, very quickly. I could care less who wins the Super Bowl or loses it. Ah. But what bothers me is you, you almost beg people to call about this outrageous right yep and and nobody's calling in fact the side issue and i've been listening and there were three callers and right. two of them are your stalwarts right, you right, know that right and jim and and jim brought up a very good point and, nope. and, and it's a fantastic point it was very relevant but what bothers me is either you have right. Lack your of- callers and i thought or or people do listen they don't care, or they're too timid to call and voice That's, their opinion. That is and a, why I think they're just that beaten is, down by so many. I mean, look, again, open borders, 90% taxes, take your guns, take your health care. Yep. I mean, I don't, I don't think people are shocked by anything. I gen, I've said this 
during the Obama administration that he could sacrifice a child on on the West Wing lawn and it, the media wouldn't force him out of office. And Ernie, I go to the, your comment a few moments ago. I've asked where is the outrage? I haven't seen. Yeah. I haven't and, seen and that the right. Was a good question. I haven't and, seen and, the. And I, I answered it for myself. No, I know. Where, where are your? Where, where, where are where, the listeners? Where, 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 no, better yet, where's the outrage? Where is? Let, forget my listeners. Look at the newspapers. Look at the letters to the editor. Yeah. Not happening. No one's. I haven't seen right to life organizations complaining. I've seen more from a Catholic bishop than these organizations that are supposedly, and I shouldn't say supposedly, that are committed to right to life. Where are the where where was the right to life organizations outside the governor's office? Well, let's, where, that, let's talk. The, I mean, I, I but, could I could spend all day bashing um, I mean, the leadership of the Catholic Church who, that has not excommunicated but, 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 the yeah, governor of New York. Yep. Uh, you know. I mean, there, there, there are reasons, and this is not to get too personal, but there are reasons why I no longer worship in the Catholic Church. I was raised that way. Uh, but I'm sorry, if you aren't going to obey your rules, don't expect me to. I, and, and so, Ernie, where I, I, at town hall meetings, you name it, this is, it's stunning. There was more publicity on Terry Schiavo's circumstances than oh, been, yes, uh, okay. and I remember okay. it well. And, and I was, I'm just as passionate okay. about that as, as, as I, I am about this. There was more outrage, there was more publicity, there was more action, more activity than we've seen all week long. And by the way, remember, Ernie, this started in New York a week ago. I mean, so this is yeah, old yeah, news. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it's this, old news. This guy, Governor Cuomo started it, and this guy is, you know, piled on with it. Oh, well, uh, his, his, no, actually, it's his legislature. So, um, no, thank you very much, Ernie. I, I appreciate that, and the frustration is, again, I asked, uh, like you, Ernie, where's the outrage? Thanks for the call. Dan, I, 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 I want to end this on a, a little more positive note. One, very quickly, I want to mention St- Stacey Abrams. She's going to be giving the rebuttal. I contend that that is... Um, uh, you know, the, uh, a, a kiss of death, if you will, for uh, politicians. I, I, I'm stunned that they would ask her to give the, uh, the rebuttal. I, I mean, for Tuesday night's State of the Union address. So, uh, any comment? Um, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it, uh, look, there, this is part of trying to relitigate an election okay, she okay, lost. Okay, this, okay. Is, this is Demo- Democrats... You know, they, they believe that they never lose an election. Right. All they, so if they lose an election, they just they either go to court or they go to the court of public opinion. Good point. Good point. Okay. Uh, then let's go to the topic. And I know I've got a caller coming in here in just a moment, probably with a comment related to uh, the topic. I'll tell you what. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get the caller on. Um, I'm going to do that right now. I'll make very – because I want to go to uh, – uh, He's got to put him on hold. All right. There we go. Let me get the caller on. Uh, Irving, good evening yeah, to you. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Calling in response to Ernie, uh, uh, you know, we are uh, saddened about what's going on. One thought that I have is if uh, the pro-choice folks say the women have uh, total control of their bodies, so once a child is born, uh, they don't have total control because now the child is on its own. So. How can a doctor eliminate the life of that child without it being murder? Now, it's a good question. Um, thank you very much for your call. I got to go to a break. Well, top of the hour break. But thank okay. you, thank good. you very Bye. much. Bye. Appreciate that. Well, I, I still am, and Dan, I, uh, well, well, we'll not worry about it. But the the topic of um, outrage and letters to the editor and response physically and uh, verbally and well, vocally, we're just not seeing it. I, I just wonder if we're just to your point. We're so worn down or we're callous. Your thought as we wrap it up. I, I think people are worn down. And they're also, at this point, they're, they're, they're girding for everything to get worse. Because they're going to get so much worse over the next two years. We're all beaten down by the first two years by the most corrupt media in American history. And we're looking forward to saying, oh, it's going to get worse than that. And... People, people know they're going to try to steal the election. I mean, you've got Bloomberg announcing he's going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to steal the election. Right. He runs a media empire. Good point. Dan Gaynor of Newsbusters.org. Dan, as always, thanks for being with us this evening here on Viewpoints.